Yeah. We good? How we doing, guys? Good. Uh, Joey, just the, the fact that you're here from the start, how does the, how's it feel right now uh, going through all this versus where it's kind of maybe been for you the last uh, couple of years? Uh, good. I mean, this has been a you know relatively comfortable camp. Uh, we're back at the house and stuff like that. I'm, I'm relatively close to my family, like what's been talked about from being from Stafford. So uh, being able to go home and sleep with, you know, at my own house and stuff like that, it's been pretty comfortable not being at like a camp and stuff like that. But, um, you know, getting comfortable with cheese and chess has been really important for me. Just making sure we're continually building our chemistry both on and off the field. So, um, no, I mean, it's been, a, I would say, a comfortable camp. But obviously I know, like, my implications, I know what I have to get done. But um, I just feel, like I guess I feel, I feel pretty confident going in. So, Based on what you were able to do when you came here, how much did that help your confidence or what did that do, do for your confidence? Good as you were? Uh, to be honest with you, last year going into camp in Carolina, I felt – uh, you know, really good about where I was at. I was, you know, hitting a really good ball. It was pretty consistent and um, just kind of had a little bit of a hiccup going into preseason and, you know, I was trying to right that ship. And uh, I feel like the entirety of the season was stuff that I'd been prepping for, obviously not doing it on three different teams, but uh, to kind of have the statistic, you know, position that I was in last year, um, I had been prepping with that and it, it kind of put into, you know, the atmosphere last year with talking with my sports psychologists and some of my coaches. So, um, I mean, going into this year, I, I have that same mentality, the same process that I put forth last year. Um, I'm in that same mindset. And so, um, I mean, obviously it's good to end on a good note last year, but this is a brand new year. This is a brand new, you know, start of my process again and hoping to just make sure that everything goes as planned. So, Ron was saying the other day that he noticed a difference, like in Carolina when you guys stayed together, like your mindset was, I hope I make it. And now it's, I know I'll make it. When did that kind of change for you? And I guess, do you agree with that? Like, did, we, did you feel timid back then? Uh, yeah, so kind of the best way to put it into an analogy is when you walk in as a rook, or as a freshman in college and you got, you know, Jed Chem and general calculus and all this stuff and you got to get, you know, you got to take all these classes. Uh, for me, I was still kind of in that mindset as a rookie. I was, there's a lot to learn about kicking. There's a lot to learn about my craft and what I wanted to do when I was kicking. So um, if, if you were to ask me, on a day-to-day -day basis what my process was going out to the field and getting ready. Um, I mean, I, I was a little bit kind of shell-shocked. Uh, and now I definitely feel like I'm in a position where, like, I know exactly what I want to do on a daily basis. Um, I'm, a, you know, graduating. You know, this is my fourth year in the league. I'm, I'm in that senior position looking to maybe, like, take on a master's program or a doctor program. So I kind of feel like that's a better analogy to, to kind of sum it up. So when he said that the other day, it's, it's definitely a feel for me when I'm, when I'm walking out there. There's no... There's no doubt of what I'm trying to do, and there's you know there's a very high likelihood that I'm going to get it done. Um, where kind of my rookie year, it was like, eh, you know, I'm hoping that I can make this kick. You know, I, I've done it before, and I'm hoping to do it again. But this year is definitely more of a uh, let's just go get this done, get off the field, execute. So, what's the difference? Like, is it some, what? It, what is it that you learn that you take go from that? to the other uh to break down kicking is uh i could i could talk to you for this for like eight nine hours about every single little situation that happens on a, on a kick yeah and so it's i mean r relatively like if you, i know exactly what happens if i miss left i know exactly what happens if i miss right and i know exactly what happens when i put it down the middle um where my rookie year if i miss left the next time i'm like okay i'm going to try to do something to make it almost go right and then i'd miss left again and it was like wait a minute that was supposed to go right and so kind of all those trial and errors, those little like kind of experiments that you put in trying to figure out where your swing's at, um, I'm, I'm definitely more dialed in than I was back then. So, how about In terms of like you talk about process and how you work, did anything change there? Will you become maybe more adhere to a certain pattern or work regimen that helps with that as well or anything? Or is it, um, or is it more just basic like that? I, I, I mean, even just like my swing as a whole has changed, uh, my stance, my start, like how, where I'm making contact with the ball, all those things, my finish. Um, there's all these little intricate things about kicking that have changed and have grown. Um, but that's just, again, that's that's difference between year one to year four, um, but really polishing it out. So um, it's just kind of the product has evolved over time and has gotten refined and refined and refined. and. A coach kind of alluded to this. There's been guys in the league that have kind of started off a little rough and have really found their own. Someone that I look up to a lot is Graham Gano. Um, obviously, he was here in Washington, had his struggles early on in his career. Um, and, I mean, you look at his, some of his games that he puts on, some of the performances he puts on on, on Sundays, 
he's you know, he's one of the the best kickers in the league and um to be in i think he's in year like 10 or 11 now it's just years and years of refining his craft so uh, i definitely feel like i'm in my own process and journey of doing that and um i'm just kind of taking from some of those older guys and trying to put it in my repertoire um in the off season do you and trust and cheeseman do you guys work out on your own do you work out together i mean what's generally the process there we get a pretty good amount uh, amount of work in during otas and stuff like that but um i think something uh that this year has been new to me um like trust went back home cheese went back home and obviously i'm close so uh there was an opportunity for all of us to kind of get away and get away from football for a little bit work on our stuff that we needed to on our own and um, we came back and, you know, we feel like we're, we've been clicking on the same page. And it's something that's nice because I it's nice to be able to build a comfortability between the three of us, you know, and make sure that we understand what each of us, you know, expects from each other. Um, but if you're able to really hone in on, on your one third of our operation and take care of that. And then when you come back together, everything's just that that well put together. That doesn't really matter kind of who we put in there. It's it's kind of like blind to it. I mean, I went down and was kicking in Charlotte with you know, some other NFL guys and was still getting the same work in with a, with a full op, but um, my process was making sure I take care of what I have to and then come here and kind of put it all together and have a good good puzzle. And going back to North Stafford, as a linebacker and a kicker, when, when did the shift happen to just kicker? Uh, so my junior year, I started kind of getting into kicking a little bit more. Uh, my, the senior that was there when I was a sophomore, Austin Greeby, kicked at the Naval Academy. He was, one, he was really, really close with my brother. Uh, kind of just was like, hey, I think you should really look into kicking. It's a good opportunity. Go see this coach from the local area who Paul Woodside um, has been working with kickers for years. And I went up and started working with him. And I still was pretty hesitant my junior year. Uh, my senior year when I started getting a little bit more, you know, not noticed by some colleges and, st colleges and stuff like that, I kind of took it a little bit more seriously. But even I was actually just talking about today, when I, when I was getting recruited at Virginia Tech, Foster and me had talked, and it was kind of a thing where if you kick, you kick. If you don't, come over and you know play linebacker. And I had more of an idea of when to go there, learn under one of the best defensive coordinators in all of football. And you know if if my career gets cut short doing something, maybe I can GA with him and you know be a defensive coordinator, or, you know defensive analyst, something like that. So um, kicking really didn't, even in college, kicking really didn't hit me like I'm gonna want to do this in the in the NFL till probably end of my sophomore year. And uh, once that kind of came in, um, there was just a lot of, I, I realized how raw I was and how much work I had to really put into it. So um, that kind of led me into my junior, senior year struggles here and there and coming out, not being drafted, not being picked up as an undrafted free agent, all those things um, kind of molded me where I'm at now. But yeah, I mean, if, if they told me tomorrow that I could suit up and play linebacker on Saturday, I would, I would do it in a heartbeat. But uh, for, the, for the sake of my body, I probably will never do that, so. Kai Forbath, who used to kick here, said that FedEx is one of, if not the hardest venues to kick in. Is that a reputation that uh, the stadium has amongst kickers? And I know you had great success last year, but do you maybe agree with that? Yeah, uh, the wind in there is pretty crazy. Um, I don't know what it is. That, I mean, I've kicked in like Heinz, the Heinz Field, or was it now? It's a, a, it's Heinz, yeah, Pittsburgh, yeah, Heinz Field uh, is. Uh, is pretty much you know known as a, a pretty hard place to kick and i kicked there when i was in college and you can figure out where the like the wind's coming off the river so it's like obviously this is what's happening but i don't know what it is at fedex but it, it gets a pretty crazy crosswind um you know the field's got a dome on it and, you know the grass is a little different in certain places so i think there's some things that can make it really challenging but uh to be honest with you for me it it kind of feeds into a lot of my strengths I, i'm not someone that it's too worried about wind all the time. You know, I'm not looking to play the wind crazy. I'm not, you know, I can play a piercing ball through it most of the time. So, um, I, I mean, I kind of like the reputation of having to be a hard stadium. Tress loves it. I talk to him all the time about it. And, you know, he, he, he enjoys the respect that a lot of guys come in and be like, dude, how do you, how do you punt here? You know, how do you kick here? Um, obviously, it's nice for it to be our home stadium, so we play there more often. We can get used to it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in that boat of wanting to take it as a challenge and just say, like, you know, this is how good I can be. This is where I have to kick all the time. And, you know, I'm going to be the most consistent in my own stadium. So is Tress as boisterous every day as he is at the microphone? Tress has like one of the coolest personalities to be around. Yeah, I mean, uh, people talk about all the time. He's he's going to probably have a career outside of football just being like a I think he should be a great game show host. Like if 
Uh, Steve Harvey wants to give up Family Feud and Tress wants to go on. I think that'd be awesome. I think Tress would have to grow a pretty nice mustache to compete with him. But um, no, I mean, he's just got such a good personality to be around. He, you know, makes everything light, makes it, you know, not seem as serious. Like he can lock in when he needs to. And he obviously does, he has and, and does continually on a daily basis. But um, I mean, he's just he makes everything just lighter you know he just takes a lot of the stress off things um and it's i mean it's important for me and cheese to kind of have that because uh, obviously our positions have a lot of stress put on them and you know we're we're you know, told to perform at the top level all the time and there's 32 positions you know if you don't do well you're gonna get cut and to have a guy like Tress come in and just be like dude like let's just have fun let's just go out there and enjoy what we do and and, and do 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 well at it you know he's he's been one of the top three punters in the league for what four or five years now at least so um you can kind of take some of his energy and, and realize like i can have fun doing this job all the time so when did the dog days of camp set in for you and, and how do you get through uh to be honest with you dog days haven't really set in i mean we we have been on the pretty similar schedule as what we were in otas obviously we're a longer schedule we're like 11 hours through whatever the pa has us doing but um I mean, we're out of practice early, get done. I get to go in a lift, which is my enjoyment of the day. And then, uh, you know, we got meetings here and there, but it just gives us time. It's, it's nice being in the facility with the three of us, me, Cheese, and Tress, just to be able to, you know, we'll play cards, talk, whatever, watch, you know, watch TV, whatever it needs to be. So they haven't really set in yet, um, and I don't, I don't really see them doing it. But I will tell you, this heat, I lived here for 13 years. Dude, this heat has been insane. I don't remember – the heat being this bad. Um, growing up with a car with bad air conditioning, I knew how hot it'd get. Go on a date with a girl and just be sweating the entire time in my car. It, it's been it's been bad. So um, that's probably the only thing that I'm I'm a little over right now. But obviously we had rain on a day. We had a shorter day, so it's probably gonna be hot tomorrow. And then Saturday will probably be pretty hot too. So good. Thanks guys. Appreciate it.